Jeez, I feel a bit red in the face after watching that game. Man United 2-1 winners at Goodison Park. How in the world was that such a hard-fought win? That should have been a game where Manchester United won by like two, three, maybe even four goals. But it was a game that United won. A game that United definitely should have won 3-1. VAR, refereeing, it's all a joke these days. It really is it's just a, dis it's a disgraceful joke. And there's nothing else you can say about it. After the decisions we've seen in the game against West Ham with Antonio with a handball that was fine. And then in the game between Liverpool and Arsenal against what, Saliba when his hand was up and it wasn't a handball. But that was a handball. Was that, it's some dude at a computer that still takes floppy disks just sitting there with a cigarette going, eh, let's keep it interesting. Yeah, no, actually, it's, that's disallowed. Fucking bullshit. It really, really is. But that game there, that overall performance to the response from Manchester United there today, fantastic. This team does have characters now. This Sandro Martinez, Argentina, indeed. I love the bloke. I cannot wait to see what the celebration is going to be like when he scores his first goal for United. But as an overall team performance, fantastic. After the fact that we went 1-0 down. It was, a, it was a slow start from United. But there were a lot of similarities between that game today there and what we saw against Omania. When I was in Cyprus, Manchester United as an overall team, we dominated, we created chances, but there were so many opportunities where we could have made more of it, where it was a poor decision in the final third that took away from the chance. And if it's not that, then it's a ridiculous VAR decision that's just, I can't be asked to talk about it. But I'll tell you, look, there are lots and lots of positives, I think, to take from that game. Join me for this little 10 minute review and let's go through it. First and foremost, look, three points. I think that means we're fifth. I think that means we're one point behind Chelsea. That now buries the City game. The City game was never a, a reality check for United. I knew we were going to lose to City. I predicted we were going to lose to City. It was the manner of the performance that annoyed United fans. But look at that performance there today. Not only did we come uh, from behind again, it was, the, it was the manner of the performance. The control of it. On the edge of Everton's box, we were, we were knocking it around. Lovely one-touch football, creating chances. And we took our chances. And that's three and three from Anthony. He's the first ever... I'm not sure whether this is the right stat or not. First ever Premier League player to score in his first three Premier League games. Is that right? Doesn't sound right. Anyway, he scored in his first three Premier League games. And I backed him to score today. I actually put a bet on him to be first goal scorer. I should have just done it any time. It doesn't matter anyway. Lovely goal from United. Breakaway. Nice pass from Martial. Through to Anthony equalizer from that point onwards united got some control of the game one thing i want to say about martial is it feels like we're just in the martial cycle now this is it promise and potential that's followed by goals and you hype him up because you know he's got the quality there but then bam an injury comes and the potential is never fulfilled and you wait and you repeat that cycle i just don't know if he's ever going to be able to break that cycle and that's not really a slight on him it's just there are certain players that are plagued by injuries in their career. It's a tough to do it at the elite level in the Premier League with Manchester United. And it feels like Martial's falling foul of that. But a certain man came on and scored his 700th club goal. And I tell you what, in that game, I think we, we saw the absolute best and the absolute worst of Casemiro. And I think Casemiro is one of the... I wouldn't give him man of the match. I'll keep my man of the match for later on. I don't think he was man of the match because we saw the best and the worst. Casemiro for the uh, goal that Everton scored, just caught in the ball, caught on the ball. Uh, you could say it was a bit of a hospital pass, but he should have known that there was a player behind him before he received the ball. You know what Scholes always talks about, head on, head on a swivel, like that. So he shouldn't have been caught in possession there. And it was a bad mistake. But then we saw the best from Casemiro in that game as well. It was utterly elite what he did for Ronaldo's goal. In, in transit, in midfield, doing what defensive midfielder does, boom, and within two set, bam. Two touches, release Ronaldo with a perfect pass. And Ronaldo did what Ronaldo does. 700 club career goals for Ronaldo now. And you know that I've been a fierce critic of Ronaldo this season because I've seen a shadow of Ronaldo. And it's almost like he's coming into fitness now because he did. He looked fitter today. Ronaldo didn't have a preseason. He's, having, he's had his preseason during the season. And that's why he looks so sloppy. That's why preseasons are so important especially in a system like Eric Ten Hag's, which is so intense. Ronaldo played well today. He really did. I'll tell you what, Bruno's fuming at him, though. Two chances that he took off the plate from Bruno. One was when he was offside where Bruno scored, and it was ruled out for offside rightly because Ronaldo touched it. Had he just not touched that, I think Bruno would have scored from that chance. And I think it was when Casemiro curled a ball in off the end of a lovely move for United. And then Bruno <laughs> was there just behind Ronaldo. Ronaldo took it off his head. 
But look, it doesn't really matter because we've got three points. But that's why he's on the wall. I love Ronaldo, man. And it's, it's just I'm seeing a faded hero, I suppose. But he can still do it with moments. And that was his moment today. I love that celebration, by the way. Need to try and get a... Uh, Try and get it so you get the whole pit. There it is. <laughs> I love that celebration. That absolutely cracked me up. But look, it's uh, for United to go there today, it was a tough game. Everton, I think, conceded the least amount of goals. They only conceded twice in the legal season. Everton played like old Stoke, really. Long balls into the box. Calvert-Lewin coming on, pumping it in, pumping it in, pumping it in, pumping it in. That's what they were doing, and we stood firm. We withheld the pressure, and we did that against Southampton. Less than we've now done it against Everton too. Three times away from home, and all three of them have turned into wins. Even when we're backs against the wall and the pressure's there. That's what happens when you've got leaders like Lissandra Martinez who are setting the tone, man. I fucking love that dude. Somebody who played really, really well today. Have to point this out. I think Luke Shaw played pretty damn well. Came back into the team after being hooked, and he did the job. And it wasn't just the fact that he was good going forward, which everybody's got to be as a modern-day fullback. His recovery runs were there defensively he was very good today and that is so important because that's been probably the biggest criticism i think you could say of luke shaw's game is that he just gets caught out of position defensively too much um he didn't today i thought he was very very good and i think De Gea was pretty good today there were a couple of a couple of times where he one in particular where he sort of read the ball well and was like 10 15 yards out of his box and that's what a, a defender a, a goalkeeper can give that sort of confidence to the def to the defence to play a higher line, they know that the keeper's going to sort of sweep out and clean up. Made that save just from J tip fingertip save from James Garner's little curler into the box. Of that. That Frank Lampard sort of went for the narrative at the end, didn't he? He's like, all right, go sod it. Just bring James Garner on. Just put the big dude on as well. We know what we're going to do. Swing it into the box. Everton were average, man. They were average. And that game should absolutely not have been a nail-biter towards the end. And that's probably going to be the main thing that Ten Hag says in dressing. He said, look, well done, lads. Crack and win. 2-1, but what the fuck? That game should have been 3-1, 4-1 by halftime. That game should have been 3-1, 4-1 from halftime going into the last 10 minutes. Where's the, where's the clinicalness? And that's the, that's the big thing I would say from the last two games. There are a lot of positives to take from the overall control of the games that we've had against Omania and Everton. But there are real frustrations that, that we can have as fans from the fact that we're just not taking enough of those chances. We're not making enough chances. Well, that's a lie. We had like 28 shots against Omania. But we're not making enough clear-cut chances. I think there was one in particular on the break. We were, like, we were on a break and Bruno was there and it was passed and it eventually came back to Ericsson who sort of fired it over the bar. But if we'd been better and made better decisions, that would have been like a clear-cut chance rather than an Ericsson thunder bastard that he's going to try and rifle into the roof of the net. You've got to be better at that. Very... Uh, there's a lot of positives taken from this game. This is not me trying to slight a win. Because it, it, those are the sorts of games where United have become undone over the years. It really is. And as I said, the game should have been and was dead and buried. 3-1 with 10 minutes to go. But for a fucking outrageous VAR decision. And it's just stupid, man. It really is stupid. It's like you see that from Rashford and you see that from VAR. And only a couple of hours early when the ball bounced up against his arm. And it, that wasn't handball. But it was handball against uh, Rashford. It wasn't handball against Antonio in the game before. Like, make your mind up. As I said, it's just some dude who decides on a, there are no rules in football anymore. There's no clear cut rule. It's just well, however hungover the person is feeling who's doing VAR. Oh, I can't be. Oh, I've got it. Yeah, yeah, you've gone in, that's a goal. Nah, nah, never mind. It's just it's mood dependent. That's what it feels like with the rules in football now, and that's just not what rules are. It should be very easy to tell. But I'm just delighted to see Anthony. I backed him to score a goal because I think he was very exciting against Omania. It seems like he just loves cutting on his left foot. And it also seems like defenders can't really particularly stop it. Very Iron Robin in, in that sense. Iron Robin-esque in that sense. But look, fair play to Ronaldo for getting that 700. I think he looked better today. His desire was there. And that like when when when, he, when we went on that counter-attack where he started it, blasted 70 yards down the pitch. And Rashford, crack a ball from him. Seamus Coleman got his foot in the way. Would have been an excellent goal for Ronaldo. That's what I want to see from Ronaldo. Remember, I backed him to be our top goal scorer at the start of the season. There's no agenda against him, and I've tried to explain that so many times on the channel, but I can't be asked anymore. Back him from Ronaldo to get that goal. Overall, decent performance from him. My man of the match, I'm probably going to go for Luke Shaw. You might think that's a little bit boring, 
But given the criticism that's been handed towards him, to come in and do that and defensively do that, I think he played pretty well. You might disagree with that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Casemiro, I personally think Casemiro is a case of when and not if he just blossoms completely. We saw the best and the worst of it. And today, I think, just showed that it's just a case of him getting used to the pace of the Premier League. And when he finds that and he clicks, brilliant. And made in Madrid that second goal, wasn't it? Casemiro to Ronaldo. I could take that all day long. Three points, tough away win. That's another tough away win. Added on to the uh, Leicester and Southampton. Fifth, one point off fourth. Let's build this momentum now. We're not going to have another random two, three, four week break. We've got the World Cup coming up in five, six weeks. Let's just blast it. Omania coming up on Thursday, then Newcastle on Sunday. Let's go. Three points, big win. Happy days.